one of the big things I think that that was underscored is that we didn't talk about the casualties long enough about what kind of casualties sh was experiencing Russians when they fled the uh, Kharkiv Oblast because the number of captured troops is not that high it is in hundreds but it's not in thousands that was I guess expected by some people well firstly we do know that they tried to escape we do know that a lot of the trucks uh, full with people were running away some of them got hit but the actual casualties were not that high but we need to understand one thing with this kind of routing and this kind of a attack that happened first casualties we know of it's how many russians are killed and there is plenty there are plenty we've seen videos there is plenty of uh, pretty dead orcs which is good the second casualty is wounded again it's a simple one we saw a lot of dead orcs that means there's also somewhere a lot of injured orcs very good so we definitely know that part uh some counting vary someone pulled the number of seven thousand randomly from somewhere I have no idea where they came up with this number. I couldn't find any proof that uh, confirms this number from any, any source. Uh, it was just like 7,000. There we go. Yeah, who counted that? I don't know. Anyway, uh, despite especially because there were still like, there are still pockets of resistance around Izium. Like maybe not as many as we 24 hours before, but still quite a lot. Then the next one is the one that we don't talk enough. Is the refusals like in the russian army right this is not a war russia has not declared this as an actual war so the russian military can actually decline participation in this war and we know that after a couple of months the decline rate was um, was going up and up and up and after the withdrawal from kiev the the the, the, uh, the withdrawal rate of the Russian forces came to about 35 to 40 percent that's what we know from official sources that means that about 40 percent of the people that participated in a campaign in Ukraine were actually pulling their application to the army and said get me back to the my constant dislocation facilities I will continue my service at home however what Russians said like no we need manpower so what the Russian commands, commanders were ordered is to essentially stockpile their, their letters, to make it as long as possible, as humanly capable to hold these letters, tell them that the letters were lost, uh, like round send them letters, basically do anything. Because one of the things that we saw on the pictures, whenever uh, like some kind of unpacking of the command headquarters we saw from Izium was the stockpiles of refusal letters from the military the problem is that russian made it so so that military that want to withdraw they cannot just drive from the border because that is defection right you cannot just leave your orders because you're technically however within your country you can do that so within russia you can just basically go to the nearest police station and say hey i got lost i'm a, a military this is my dislocation facility can you get me to my dislocation facility and they are obliged by the law in Russia to do that. That means if a Russian soldier can make it on the Russian territory, he can basically just run into the forest to the nearest uh, patrol. And they are, by the law, supposed to get him to his uh, dislocation facility. And unfortunately, because Russia plays pretend with the law and stuff, and it's not a completely uh, this lawless totalitarian state, they abiding by their same own uh, weird twisted laws. So that, that means that a lot of the troops that now escaped the Izium, they are now basically, like, think about this way. You get a bunch of people that just barely escaped death. They are scared shitless. And they're coming out and they're like, okay, time for you to regroup and you're going back in. First thing they're going to hear is, fuck off. And I can guarantee you that it's more than 40% that is refusing to call back to Ukraine. That means that of a lot of the orcs that escaped, not a lot of them are coming back. That's why it's additional win, despite people are claiming, oh, there's not that many captured or dead orcs. Yes, but they're still not coming back. So that is an important thing that not always is completely spoken through. And I want you just to know about this. 
uh, the next thing that that we want I want to talk is about like well Russia can still you know get enough troops like the Chechens are are now uh, posting the, those scary videos well important thing to understand why Chechens are so afraid of inside Russia they are a big boogeyman uh, because Chechen leader uh, basically Ramzan Kadyrov got all of these powers uh, granted to him by Putin to essentially kill his own people and subjugate his own people after the Second Chechen War. This also created a lot of lawlessness for Chechens. So whenever Chechens did something, it was not the Russian uh, Russian internal forces that were dealing with Chechens, but rather the Ramzan himself. And that created this image of Chechens. While you are big and strong and you're supporting Chechen, uh, you're supporting Kadyrov, you are... Uh, essentially a good Chechen uh, and and don't get me wrong I know the difference between Ch uh, Kadyrovs and Chechens Chechens the actual Chechens they do not support Kadyrov the actual name is Kadyrovtsi but it's just not that commonly used and I just want to explain this for my Western audience so I'm, I'm asking a little bit of sorry oh my god I'm asking sorry uh, to a Chechen people <laughs> don't take it the wrong way but this is just funny I, I caught myself on this but I definitely know the difference between the Kadyrovtsi and Chechen it's just uh, not a very common thing for Westerner to know and I'm just explaining some of the these things and inside of Russia because of this lawlessness Chechens became these boogeyman like the Kadyrovs the the scary thing the problem is it is inside Russia only Ukrainians they don't have this mental state that they are in some sort more of a threat than any other Russian soldiers moreover over this scale of the war we already saw that they are mostly known in Ukraine as TikTok troops they are being laughed at because they try to put themselves on out in the picture they have all these fancy uniforms they're not even wearing sometimes the army shoes, but rather like Prada shoes or something like this. They are being laughed at in Ukraine. Ukrainians are not scared of them. Who is scared of them for some reason is the Westerners. We in the West have weird perception that, well, firstly, we were scared of the Russians, period. And then inside Russia, there is also scary Chechens. And then we're scared of uh, Chechens even more. Well, I mean, the Kadyrovsi, obviously. So... I don't know why we are still following this image. This is one of the myths. We already started slowly getting away from the myth of Russia being this great and terrifying state. And I think it's about time we in the West also stop thinking about Kadyrovtsi as this big threatening military force because they are not. They are as people as they are. Nothing special about them.